Hey everybody, BTO Pro here. See how I did that? Uh, today, we're going to take a quick look at a performance optimization that has to do with web components, things that we can only make possible because of the APIs of the browser. Now, part of this is starting at this screen with the page part open because I just noticed this. Like, oh, I was not aware that that was a thing. So, the other reason I'm recording this, this is a common performance optimization task that you can learn more about intersection observers and lazy loading by actually doing it and implementing it in our repository as part of your project. Because these are for later, if you're getting the grip from all these videos recently. So what I'm looking at here, establishing context of this scenario, is we got hacks. And hacks, in this case, we're reviewing this demo. Hacks has a bunch of just random elements on here. But what I noticed when I loaded the page is, this GIF all the way down the bottom was loading as part of the setup process. Now, look, in this case, it claims it's 174 bytes. However, it says the resource size is 6.2 megs, implying that, for whatever reason, the cached version is 174 bytes. So I noticed this 6 meg file loading as part of hack setting up and said, uh, what? Well, it's this. So you click this. And there's this funny meme about GIFs in Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So the issue is not necessarily that GIF, right? If you're throwing a meme in from some GIF source and you're loading a very large GIF, I mean, that's what the content is, right? We're making fun content as part of what hacks is. People can be creative and do whatever they want. However, that shouldn't have to impact the performance of the downstream user. Now, historically it has. I have to load that GIF if it's anywhere on the document. So let's look at some ways we can solve this. Um, I'm inside our mono repo <clears throat> and I was messing around with hacks. That's why these are open here. But Ali GIF player is what that element is. So if I look at Ali GIF player, uh, we can see it's extending lit element. It's got some schema behaviors mixed in that just gives us some metadata stuff that we can work into it. But it has effectively like three images, sort of. Yeah, two, well, yeah, three, because this background thing. So if we look at just Ali Jeff, I'll reload, because I started implementing this. So we've got, uh, and uh, I apologize for the stuff over here, this is from Screencastify, it throws log messages when you're recording. So that's not from my elements code. So we've got this GIF, I click, it starts playing. Now, if we look at the network inspector here, and I'll refresh, it does have a GIF loading here. It says it's from memory. Let's disable cache load. Okay, so we've got nothing loaded right now. I disabled the disable cache toggle here in my inspector. Let me move this over in my inspector. Um, and what this helps do is it sometimes Chrome will cheat and be like, hey, I already know what that image is, and it, it loads it anyway. But what happens now is I click on the button and then it loads the GIF, and then you see it there. Now let's throw this into a throttled environment. Let me move my little picture of me around. The throttle environment will be fast 3G, okay? So we'll move me over there. And then I'm gonna reload the page. Okay, I've got caching disabled, this loading in on a fast 3G connection. This is loading up some of the demo assets that power this Polymer-based demo environment. Loading, loading, okay. Now we got things, oh, now the images are loaded. Okay, but this is just top image. Now, if I click this, let's see what happens. Click, images in placeholder mode while this is loading. It's loading, loading, it's an enormous GIF. It's gonna get it, see? So this is what we try to simulate. We try to simulate very slow environments. Previously, that GIF would have caused the entire page to take a performance hit on loading. We saw how slow it loaded already. It's because it's got a whole bunch of stuff to do these little um, like code snippets and things. So it's not a terribly optimized demo space. But the point is this is the type of performance hit that would have been tacked on just to load that little GIF. You may never even interact with the GIF. So this is why it's critical to put performance first into everything that we do. So let's look at how I made that work right there. Now, if I do this one, it'll, do, it'll kick off the same thing. It's told, hey, go load this, but it keeps a placeholder image in place while it's loading. So this is a mix of lit element magic and um, and just native the way that these tags work. So 
we've got a couple things going on. We've got some CSS up above, sure, but we've got a container, we've got an image, this, uh, the little GIF APN there loaded. The way that this works, right, we've got Ali GIF player, we've got alt, so that's the alt metadata or for screen readers and things. Um, and then we've got source, which is the GIF that's playing. And then we've got very verbose SRC without animation. So SRC without animation would be this, right? That you have a static image and then they go, oh, I wanna play it. Now what this is satisfying is an accessibility issue of its own. You shouldn't just have automatically animated media playing. I'm looking at you, all of you video background GIFs. So the user should be able to start and stop animation is what it is. You could play it, but as long as they have to be able to stop it because it could be disorienting uh, for certain um, um, visual conditions. So what we have is we have an API where we have SRC without image and we've got it with image. So let's look at where this is in our code. Okay, so we've got it in our properties um, method. And lit element will basically take any of these properties whenever they change, notice that they change either in the attribute or the property internal, and then it's going to update what's rendered for you very quickly. So what we can see here is we've got our render function. Lit element uses this and anything decorate or anything that's in the HTML function here. It's then going to make sure that these variables are printed into it because it's using the back tick. So this is template literal syntax. And so we've got our alt uh, from the upper tag wired into our shadow root here as we're working in. And we've got our SRC without animation. So this is what you see by default. However, it also has a loading equals lazy flag on it. And so what that means is if I filter, let's just filter to images. And let's make this bigger so we can't see that bottom one. It's critical. I don't see the bottom one. Um, Actually, we'll disable throttling. Okay, so let's reload. Got throwing disabled. Now, when I scroll down, because that loading equals lazy, as soon as the image is visible, it should load it in. Well, apparently it loaded it, loaded him in already. Let's see if we make this even bigger. Kind of hard to, hmm, hard to fake this one at the moment. Might need to push it even further down the page. Uh, some of our demos, we end up doing this where we just make a whole bunch of paragraphs or whatever. P test of the loading capability. Let me go like this. Okay, save. All right, so we're up here. Load, all right, we've got 15 requests. Let's scroll down. It's still loading the thing in question. Hmm. Not supposed to, because it's not visible. Yeah, I'm Warren. All 15, we've got caching disabled. It's still loading up that image. So that's the one we're trying to make it not load. Now, let's get rid of some of these. Save, let's see what else is going on here. So we've got this source without animation. Loading is lazy, which means it shouldn't load until it is visible. Um, now, this is a native browser API as far as this loading equals lazy part. Um, but then you also have uh, a load event going on here. So what we're doing is we're saying don't load this image until it is visible in some capacity. Now, it's possible that just because of the way that this is loading that this loads instantly um, in our little demo space. Then we say hide this if the GIF is loaded and we are playing. So that means the GIF below has been loaded and we are in a playing state. So what a playing state is for our purposes is playing gets toggled based on the user clicking. So there's a toggle animation button or uh, call. Oh, it says deprecated. <laughs> I only wrote part of this. So when the button is clicked, <clears throat> we run at click, which is an event listener in lit element and we toggle. And then when toggle runs, it effectively just starts and stops, switches between the two, right? So you've got playing, uh, the thing is playing or the thing is not playing anymore. And then it uses that state elsewhere. So uh, it uses this with area language so that we can make this more accessible, but it's also how functionally when you click this, you get the little GIF 
text and you have this info so you can read more about it. Okay, so we have our GIF text, we have our button. With that, when we toggle between these two, we can see we actually have a at load event. Now that is a native browser event for image tags. So when the image is on screen, it's not necessarily loaded. So what we're doing is saying, okay, well you click to toggle it, that hits play. And you don't even notice it here, it just, it's there. So let's see if we inspect these specific elements on the page. And we go to network, we're gonna throttle that back to fast 3G. We're gonna reload, we'll come down the page. Now you can see at least, right, that hasn't loaded yet because it's not visible. So it's gonna keep going along, got some additional crests, okay. There's the images are still loading in. All right, so there's the image. Okay, and now I'm gonna inspect this so we can see what happens, right? Because we'll be able to watch it update. So I'm gonna hit GIF. This image is currently showing, right? It's supposed to be there, but it hasn't loaded yet. Now, when the loaded event kicks in, we're gonna watch these two flip. So that's gonna go along for a little bit here. Network connection is gonna make sure that it goes and gets this five meg GIF or simulating. What's it play here? But as soon as it actually loads, the image emits a native browser event for load. And then when it's loaded, we take that event, turn it into, there we go, something internal state management wise in here. You saw that flip, the hidden flip between the two. So the reason the hidden flipped is GIF loaded. So what we're saying is when this image loads and loading equals lazy is a, a a Chrome based way you can tell it not to load until it's visible. So I'm kind of double doing double duty with that here. Um, so we take this image and when we see that it is loaded, we change the GIF loaded. And then this uh, evaluation for Boolean on hidden will then get changed, right? So the GIF is loaded and it's playing. Well, that's not true anymore. Um, and so it would go, it goes away. But this is going to help ensure that when we're in that intermediary step. So we have the image and we click to do the toggle, but we need to keep that other image there until it's loaded. Because until the image is loaded, we otherwise it would like shrink and then 10 seconds later, or however long it takes to load, that thing pops back up. So this has been a brief step through of adding um, some performance implication type of code to one of our elements. So now, that we've got this in Ali GIF player. If I go back to our demo, load, we see that this has not loaded. There's no .gif file here. If I scroll to the bottom, click, now it's loaded in, but we don't get any jarring open and close because that thing isn't there. So we just saved on this page loading, a five megabyte hit from the time to, to first paint. Maybe you like that if you're an end user. So anyway, if you want to dig into more elements, I'm sure there's more elements in here that could be performance optimized in this way, as far as not handling images correctly or loading resources prior to their needs. We've also got a whole uh, series of articles about uh, intersection observers and making a mix in so that you can make sure that the element doesn't actually unpack its definition until you get there. Maybe you have a very big element like a image gallery where you don't want it to load anything until you've actually visibly brought it into the viewport. If you want to tackle this or any other issues in our mono repo, be sure to hit up hackstheweb.org and learn about our project, what we're working on. Uh, join us on in our Slack group at bit.ly slash hackslack, H-A-X-S-L-A-C-K. Somehow I get that right every time. Um, but otherwise, we'll see you in the future.